Hello, everyone. Welcome to Warren Chapel United Methodist Church here on August 2nd of 2020. This is the ninth Sunday after Pentecost, and I want to welcome you and thank you for joining us either in person or via the internet on Facebook or YouTube. This morning, our children's sermon is going to include ice cubes and playing with ice cubes. So if you have ice cubes, if you have salt, if you have a straw, if you have uh, just anything there and maybe a little bowl to put the ice cube in and a paper towel to soak, sop it up, uh, we'll be playing with uh, ice cubes in just a few moments during our children's message. Also, we'll be celebrating Holy Communion in just uh, towards the end of the service this morning. And I invite you to gather together the elements of bread and wine or juice. We will be using those during communion and invite you to partake of that. And I will be praying and blessing those. And God can work over the airwaves of the internet or any way because he is God and he is in all places at all times. He's omnipresent and he's omnipotent. So as we are gathered together here on this August 2nd of 2020, let us remember in our darkest hours, God's light continues to shine. In our weariest moments, God's strength is enough. In our times of greatest isolation, God's presence is always near. Let's pray. Mighty God, pour out your power and your strength on all of us, whether we're here in person or we're here sitting on our couches, in our places or anywhere we are watching this video. Grant us the nourishment that we need to receive your word. May your presence fill our lives and carry us forth, preparing us to be your people and equipping us to do your work in this world that we live in. In your holy name we pray, amen and amen.
Kids, good morning. It's great to see you today. I want to know, have you ever watched a wrestling match? Uh, wrestling's a popular sport all over the world. Wrestlers have to be strong and they have to be determined to win. Wrestling isn't a modern invention, though. It's one of the oldest sports in the world, and it dates back thousands of years. Uh, let me see. Can you show me your best wrestling, your wrestler face? Ah, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. No, uh, <laughs> those were pretty good. In today's Bible lesson, Jacob spent an entire night wrestling with an angel of God after an entire, after going across the creek. And after an entire night of wrestling, God's angel told Jacob to walk away and and Jacob left the wrestling match with a new name and a limp from his hurt hip. We sometimes struggle with God too. We may, may want to do things our way instead of his way. And when it's hard for you to, when is it hard for you to obey God? Okay. Yeah, there's different times when it is a lot harder uh, to obey God. And each one of us have a different struggle. But uh, now I, I want you to get out your paper towel. And uh, I've got, and get your ice cube out as well. And uh, see, I've got my ice cube right here. And I've got a bowl that's in it. And, uh, and I want to find out, who do you think can uh, melt the, an ice cube the quickest? You can use the straw to blow hot air on it. Or you can sprinkle salt on it right here, this kind of salt, uh, and sprinkle it on there and see if it'll melt and uh, try to do it. Who could do it the most quickly? We're going to try to do it uh, very quickly. And so uh, pick out the supplies that you want to use and uh, whether you're going to blue hot air on it or if you're going to put salt on it or if you're just going to hold it in your hand and see if you can melt it quickly. Uh, so I'm going to give you a, a chance to do that, and I'm going to see if I can melt mine a little faster, or see if I can win and beat you. So uh, everybody, one, two, three, start. Let's see. Oh boy, mine's melting. Oh, mine just fell on the floor. It's melting all over the place. Ah, uh, hold on a second. I got to get it. It melted. It's getting my feet all wet. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe, maybe if I don't turn the heat up so high, but uh, we'll try this again and uh, see what it does here. Here it goes, it's melting. It's melting pretty hard, fast. It's melting pretty fast, yes. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, it's doing pretty good. Doing real good. My ice cube is almost all gone. It is doing well. It's melting real quickly and my hand's getting hot. How are you doing with your salt or your blowing your hot air on it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. It's all gone. My ice cubes melted and I'm going to put that in the bowl so it doesn't get all over the place. But uh, which do you think was faster? The salt or blowing it with a straw or hot air or rub it in your hands? You know, my ice cube probably melted much faster because I had more power. And with God's power, we can do greater things as well. We can stop doing things our way. And we can surrender to God's will and trust that he knows best. Let's pray. Dear God, 
please help us to remember that you are the one who knows what's best for us. We can surrender to your will and trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Look forward to seeing you next week. God bless y'all. Wasn't that fun melting those ice cubes? And I made a mess of water here in my office because the, the hairdryer blew the water all over the place. But I've got it all cleaned up now and I'm glad, ready to go. And this lesson that we referred to was the story of Jacob wrestling. And it comes from Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 through 31, or 32. Hear these words. And during the night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two servants' wives, and his eleven sons and crossed the Jabbok River with them. After taking them to the other side, he sent over all his possessions. This left Jacob all alone in the camp. And a man came and wrestled with him until dawn began to break. And when the man saw that he would not win the match, he touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of the socket. And then the man said, Let me go, for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? the man asked. He replied, Jacob. Your name will no longer be Jacob, the man told him. From now on you will be called Israel, because you have fought with God and with men and have won. Please tell me your name, Jacob said. Why do you want to know my name, the man replied. Then he blessed Jacob there. Jacob named the place Peniel, which means face of God. For he said, I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been spared. And the sun was rising as Jacob left Peniel. And he was limping because of the injury to his hip. And even today, the people of Israel don't eat the tendon near the hip socket where, because of what happened that night when the man strained the tendon of Jacob's hip. This is God's word for us, God's people. Thanks be to God. Now's the time we get to bear one another's burdens before the Lord. And we do that by sharing those prayer requests. We can't do that physically, so I ask that if you will, if you will call me or text me your prayer request. And my telephone number is 740-304-5133. Or you can email them to me at pastorrick at tunnelumc.org. That's Pastor Rick at tunnelumc.org. We're going to begin this morning by lifting up those concerns that are on our hearts through silent prayer, and then we'll continue on. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we have just heard the story of Jacob. As he wrestled with the angel, how he asked for the angel to bless him. And we too come to you for your blessing. There are so many times in our lives in which we have felt alienated, downtrodden, alone. And in the midst of COVID-19, Many of us may feel that way right now. And it's easy for us to wallow in our misery, to whine about all the perceived injustices that have been heaped upon us. But you encourage us to stand strong, to seek the blessings that you have pro provided for us, and to recognize the many ways that you are with us giving us strength and courage. Be with us again, precious Lord. Guide our lives as we have brought our prayers before you for those near and dear to us, seeking healing and hope for them. 
let us also remember that those same mercies are lavished upon us. And not because we deserve them, but because of your great and generous love for us. Help us to receive these blessings and in turn be a blessing to someone else. For we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen and amen. Jacob, a man with traits we might see in ourselves. Jacob, by name, a supplanter. Jacob, a, a man full of deceit. Jacob, a man who conned Esau, his brother, out of his birthright. And Jacob, his mother's favorite. And Jacob, a man who disguised put a mask on his arms and stole Isaac's blessing of the eldest from Esau. Jacob, a, a man who dreamed a dream at Bethel. Jacob, a man who deceived, a man that was deceived by his father-in-law. He was working for seven years for Rachel, the love of his life, and his father-in-law sent Leah into his tent on his marriage night. And he had to work another seven years for the love of his life, Rachel. Jacob, a man scared for his families and his own life because his brother Esau, the one that he had cheated, the one that he had done wrong to, was coming with all his entourage. Jacob, a strong man at the end of his rope, sent his family across the river, across the creek, and all that he owned went across that creek as well. And that left Jacob, a man alone. He could hear the babbling brook of Jabbok. The breeze was rustling through the trees. This was a, a peaceful place for a man not at peace. Yes, he was there all alone as the moonlight lit his face. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, he was wrestling with whom he didn't know. But it was a tough fight. The place of peace was filled with wrestling. A man full of turmoil boiled inside. On and on, the match stretched. Midnight. One in the morning. Two a.m. Three o'clock. Four in the morning. 5 a.m., the struggle continued and appeared no one was to win. Then one, the one with whom Jacob wrestled, touched Jacob's thigh and, and crippled him. But Jacob continued the fight. Daybreak came and Jacob still held on. Let me go, it's daybreak. No, not until you bless me, Jacob replied to the one he held in a half Nelson Struggling, Jacob's adversary asked, What is your name? Jacob. You're no longer Jacob, but Israel. You're no longer a deceiver. You're no longer a supplanter. But you are a contender with God. It was more than a name change that happened on the banks of Jabbok. It was a life change. Jacob received his blessing from the angel of God and was thankful that he had seen God and not died. It was more than a name change when Jacob met God and became Israel. It was a life change. It was more than a name change when Abram met God and became Abraham. It was a life change. It was more than a name change when Simon met God and became Peter, the rock on which he'd built his church. It was a life change. It was more than a name change when Saul met God on that Damascus road and was blinded and then became Paul. It was a life change. Yes, it was more than a name change for all these and others. It was a life change. On June 30th in 2019, there was another name changed. The name of the pastor changed on the 
board out in front of the building at both Tunnel and Warren Chapel United Methodist Churches. It was a name change that brought happiness to some, a sense of loss to others. And for some, it was a name change that brought hope of a better future for these congregations. It was a name change that upset some because of the added financial burden of moving from a pastor that was classified as three-quarter time to one who was, who was labeled full-time. It was a name change that had many reactions and expectations. Many, as I've met with you, want to see the, the church grow and see more youth but it'll take more than a name change on the placard out in front of each of the churches. Many want to see the glory of the Lord return to this congregation, but that will take more than a name change. Reaching out to the community and making disciples of Jesus Christ will take more than a name change on that board that's out front. Offering the love of Christ and eternal life to those in our neighborhood will take more than a name change. Getting those who come to our free community meal each month to also feast at God's table will take more than a name change on that placard. Yes, I can pray. I can preach both live and online. That's something I'm learning to do. I can reach out to the sick and the homebound through technology and in person when possible. But just because my name's on that board out front of the church building won't mean a thing in eternity. Because there was a name change on that board, but on the throne, there was no name change. Jesus sitting on that throne and was sitting there long before I came along and will be there long after I'm gone. Yes, while I'm here, I must answer my call and I must minister in his name through the Holy Spirit, but I'm not the only member of his body. I'm only part of that body and you are another part of that body and we need to work together. We have had a name change from sinner to saint, and we must reach out to see that others have that same name change. But it's more than a name change. It's a, it's a life change. Until we have surrendered completely, until we have wrestled with God and been touched by him, we cannot and we will not minister effectively. <clears throat> Remember, my ministry... Our ministry is not just my responsibility. It is all of ours. My responsibility is to minister and also to prepare you to do the work of ministry through his Holy Spirit, according to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. And just because most of us aren't gathered together physically, it doesn't mean that we aren't still called to be the church and that we aren't the church and that our call to ministry ends somehow. Because God's Spirit that binds us together and empowers us for the work of ministry for which he calls us does not have a place located at the location of our buildings, but is, lives, his residence is inside of us because we are temples of the Holy Spirit. Our relationship with Christ and one another doesn't stop just because we're not in the building. Because of COVID-19, each of us have limited contacts. We've been forced in a way to cross over our own Jacob or Jabok and be alone with God, just like Jacob did. Will we avail ourselves of this opportunity to wrestle in prayer with God? until we receive God's blessing and we are changed? Jacob had more than a name change. He was touched by God, and, and that touch took away his reliance on his own strength. So what strengths do you lean on? What talent or ability do you rely on? If we depend on and function only in our own strengths, we deceive ourselves and... We don't minister Christ. 
if we depend on just our own talents and never on the Spirit, we'll never see this church be revitalized or grow. We must wrestle with God. We must grab a hold of God and we must seek his face for until we do and we're truly touched by God, we can never effectively minister Christ and can never expect true revival. Our lives must demonstrate more than a mere name change. They must demonstrate an encounter with God and a dynamic relationship with the living God. And if you want a Christianity that is more than a name change, you need to wrestle with God. And you could do that right now, right where you are. If you're watching online, you can pause this video. And if you're in person, you can start that wrestling match right now. And as you wrestle, don't expect instantaneous results, though it could happen. Jacob wrestled all night. Your wrestling now is just a start. Seek him until you are touched by him. And don't let go until you're blessed by him. I invite you to wrestle as we sing.
Christ our Lord invites to his table all who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with God and one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Let us pray. Come to us, Holy One, even in our times of resistance. Work within us and through us, even when we wrestle with doubt and despair. Enlighten and guide us, even in our darkest hours. Bless us and call us by name, even when we reject your presence. Hold us and love us, even when we try to run away. When we feel beat down by the world and are weary with fatigue and sorrow, nourish us with your mercy and your grace. Fill us with your love that we may go forth with confidence and faith. In your mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. God's strength is enough. Christ's forgiveness is sure. Through God's strength and Christ's grace, we are blessed, loved, and made whole. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and you breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke, spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nation shall not lift up sword against nation, and neither shall they learn war any more. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, of God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. And by the baptism of his death, resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night that he was betrayed, he took, this, took the bread. He gave thanks to you, Father. And then he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you eat it, do it in remembrance of me. Then after the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, Lord. And then he gave the cup to his disciples. And he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it. Do it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us that are gathered and scattered wherever we are in our homes. And pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine, both here and in each of the homes that are gathered here virtually. 
and make these gifts of bread and wine be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the whole world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in that final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. The bread that we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Now if you're at home and take the bread and you can serve each other if uh, you've got more than one. If not, serve yourself. This is the body of Christ which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Or not me, but Jesus Christ. Then take the cup and serve one another or serve yourself. This is the blood of Christ which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. And now let us pray. Most bountiful God, we give you thanks for the world you have created, for the gift of life in giving yourself to us in Jesus Christ, whose holy life, suffering and death and glorious resurrection have delivered us from slavery to sin and death. We thank you that in the power of your Holy Spirit you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. We are your children, and yours is the glory, now and forever, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we have received light, we leave this time now to bring light to the world. As we have received God's blessing, we leave this time now to be blessings to others. Leave in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. A maker, he formed my heart before even time began. My life was in his hand, he knows. My name. He knows my every thought, and He sees each tear that falls, and hears me when I call. Let's all sing. I have a Father.
knows your name. He knows your every thought. He sees all the Oh.